Hi, Dave Scotland here for CGSWAT.com and today we're going to be in 3D Studio Max and we're going to be having a look at some 3D modeling. Uh, we're going to model uh, quite a simple character, just a, a 3D snail, a stylized snail. This won't be photorealistic in any way, shape or form. But hopefully we can take the character further in some future tutorials and go ahead and rig the character and put him through some animation and uh, then maybe even build a little bit of a set and uh, maybe do a, a series of tutorials just sort of taking this character through a, a fairly basic pipeline. So, um, like I said, this is a 3D Studio Max tutorial and we're going to be using 3D Studio Max 2009. What I've got here is some reference pictures that I did up in Photoshop and this is a um, very standard way of modeling characters in 3D Max where you use flat panels with the reference pictures uh, on them um, in the actual viewport to sort of help you position the uh, polygons in your model to represent the actual character. It's also a very good place to start for character design is to start with some drawings. So I've got a front view, um, it's the side of the character, but uh, when we lay this uh, character up and start modeling in Max, this will be the front view. Um, we've got our uh, right view and our top view. We don't really need a left view, so that's going to work fine. We'll get started. Okay, so we'll just close this down. Uh, that was just for viewing purposes. And there's a couple of things we need to do before we start, just to make sure that your shortcuts and uh, and various things that we'll be doing in the modeling process sort of match. Um, and it's also a fairly good practice to get into, is to uh, check your customization. Um, if you go into your customize uh, pull down menu, and then we'll have a look in customize user user interface. And what we're looking for is the keyboard shortcut menu. And because we'll be using shortcuts to navigate around the viewports and things like that, Max have actually included some shortcut menus which are specific to certain functions. And the one we want to disable, there's two actually, because we're going to be doing poly modeling, we want to select this editable poly and we want to untick the active for the keyboard shortcuts. And then we want to slide it up a little bit and we'll do edit editable poly uh, there it is edit poly and make sure that is also inactive and that's fine and then what that means now is if we navigate around our viewports using shortcuts um, like if I was in this uh, perspective view and I wanted to go to a front view I'd click F and a right view uh, a left view uh, top view the, the viewport changes with those shortcuts, but some of those shortcuts are actually mapped to functions within the, that editable poly um, submenu selection. So it's a, it's a good idea to get rid of get rid of those for now. You can always switch them on later. Okay, let's get started with our reference panels. So first thing we need to do is just bring our maps in, and we'll open up our material editor using M shortcut. And the first swatch here is fine. We're going to call this front. And we'll click on the diffuse button here. And we're going to bring up our bitmap. And we'll navigate to our reference images. Now, what I've actually done is created a PSD file with the three references within the same PSD file and that just makes it a little easier if we have to go back in there and change some scaling and things like that we can keep it all uniform so we'll select the front one individual layer click OK and we're going to go back up in the stack and we're going to drag the material from the diffuse over to opacity and we'll just click copy and now we're going to click on the opacity map and we'll slide that up and we'll just make sure that alpha is selected in the mono track there and image alpha is correct there we can also go into the diffuse and make sure that 
alpha is not selected and we can also turn that to opaque we don't need that so that's the basis of uh, our first material and another handy thing is to slide the self illumination up slide it up to 100 and that gives us a true representation of the map and what I'll go ahead now and do the exact same thing for the other two maps. Now just before I do this last map, you'll see there I've got the front and the right one done. Before I do the top one, I'll show you a quick shortcut. You can drag and drop that onto the next material swatch. Rename it top. Because we know all of the settings are going to be exactly the same except for a different bitmap, we can now just go into the bitmap settings click on the PSD and select top click OK and you'll notice there that the uh, alpha doesn't match so we can do that same process where we just drag the uh, diffuse across go into the alpha make sure that it's alpha image alpha and that's all we need for materials at the moment so I'll just minimize that down now what we need to do, I uh, deliberately made the maps that we created 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels and that makes it a little easier to set up a plane here because if we click on our primitives here, click on plane and just in a front view we're going to drag out a plane, doesn't matter the size because we're going to enter some values here. I've got my... my uh, Unit set to centimeters, and we don't want this. We want this snail to be fairly close to a sort of a real-world scale. It just makes life a bit easier when you're working in 3D to sort of keep as real-world as you can. And I'm going to make it 10 centimeters. It's a fairly big snail by 10 centimeters. Now I know that that plane now is square, perfectly 10 10 units by 10 units and our map is a thousand units a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels so just in that front view there we're going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to use my right mouse button on the uh, toggle wheels here and reset everything to zero and what that does is puts the plane right in the center of our world space right on the center of the grid and I'm just going to bring up the visibility of it now if I bring my material up I'm going to take our front material and just drag it onto the plane and we're going to click this show standard map button here and there's our there's our snail snail map and the other thing I did in preparation on those uh, images was to make sure that the base of the snail is sitting perfectly on on the center line on the horizontal 500 pixels down and that just also makes it a little easy, easier to just sort of line things up. By the way, the, I'll include these images in the project file for download with the tutorial. So what I'll actually do, I'm going to use the, uh, on my keyboard, it's the space bar. But for you, you can use down in the bottom right corner here, the minimize, maximize toggle, which uh, I've mapped to my space bar. That's an old, uh, old Maya or my way of thinking and it just makes life a lot easier to be able to switch between the active view and the maximized active view so what we're going to do is grab our panel and we're going to use rotate I'm going to hold down the shift button and I'm going to drag it around now just before I do that I'll switch on my angle snap at the top and that'll that'll drag it around in increments of 10 degrees let it go we might as well name this right ref and we might as well name this one our front ref and if we just rotate around I'll be using the alt key it's another good shortcut that you'll need to get used to and select our right ref bring up our material and drag our right reference image and switch on the visibility for it and there you have our right reference image our front image and the last one we need to do is our top view so grab the front one again 
hold down shift and we might as well go to a front view to do this hold down shift and drag it around 90 degrees and we'll call this one top ref click OK now what we're going to do we'll leave that top ref on the center line but we're going to grab our front ref and we're going to drag it back until it's just on the edge and we're going to grab our right ref and we're going to drag it to the left until it's just on the edge and then you basically get that scenario there now you'll notice also that when we come around you can see on the back of those images so select all three planes right click and bring up the properties object properties and switch on back face cull and click OK now we'll just jump back into the material editor and for all the th all three materials we're going to switch the opacity just down in the maps swatch down to 50 and just up here in opacity we'll switch that down to zero and what that does is just makes our our map transparent so that it's a little easier to see through and we haven't actually put our top map on that on that on that plane there yet so let's drag that over and switch on the visibility and while we're in that one we'll switch the opacity down to zero and down in the maps we'll switch our opacity down to 50 and the last one opacity zero and the maps will switch to 50 and that's our reference done and the last thing we need to do is just select all three right click object properties we want to untick show fro uh, frozen in grey and freeze and that way we can't select them now and they're they're locked in in fact it'll get a bit annoying that red color so we'll just unfreeze all we'll grab all three and we'll just change the color to a grey color and that's just going to make a bit of difference in our visibility back into the object properties and freeze okay so we're looking pretty good there for our reference and we can get started with the modeling if we go to a front view and what we're going to do is uh, create a box so bring up your box in the standard primitives actually we'll go to a top view to do this and our top view is not set to, it's set to wireframe so f3 sorry is wireframe and non wireframe or wireframe in shaded mode and then f4 just switches on the wireframe in shaded mode so that's all working fine uh, we'll go to that top view another good shortcut is z or z will bring up if we're way out here I can hit Z and it will it will zoom in to the selected objects and if nothing selected it'll zoom into all the objects uh, as a group and we're going to create our box so if you drag down here near the tail bearing in mind it has to be as wide as we need it to back down here so we're going to drag it up to there and if we just I'm using the alt key to just rotate around and we we've got our box there and it's looking the way we need it now if we just go to a front view and we're going to be using what's called sub poly modeling or mesh smooth modeling and to give you an indication of how that works I'll just switch on mesh smooth in my modifier stack here mesh smooth it's just off screen for you guys but uh, that's fine and you'll see a very crude looking smoothed version of that box if I go to two iterations it's a little smoother and that's because there's not enough segments in the box so if we go back down to a box here and the length segments sorry the width segments we need to increase and when we when we do this we need to bear in mind roughly where we're going to, going to be requiring width segments so around the neck here there's a turn and there's a turn back here at the body and it tapers down at the tail so make sure you give yourself plenty of segments that's probably going to be enough for us just go to a right view 
and to bring up the view menu is V and then you can hit R for right that's a very handy shortcut that V brings up all, all and you can click on any of these to go to any of these views um, we're just going to add some segments in height and width or height and length in this instance and you'll see that that starts the more segments we give it the, the more it starts to go back to its original box shape just smoothed over on the edges and uh, we don't want to give it too many because then we're going to be have a lot of work in front of us to get it back to a cylinder shape so that's going to be okay for now and if we just go to that front view and what we need to do is increase our height so that it comes up to this area here just uh, where the, sh the shell meets the body that's probably going to do it and the tail seems to match up okay the head's probably going to be okay so I think we're looking pretty good there and the next thing we need to do is make this an editable object so if we click on our modifier list again and we'll slide until we get edit poly click on that and this is where we're going to be doing most of our modeling so if you click on the edit poly so that it's highlighted we're now in edit poly mode and we can grab vertices in vertice mode here move them around we can grab polygons which are these faces we can grab edges which is one sp a specific edge and element which is the whole the whole element now what you need to be aware of is that we're not actually moving what you're what you're seeing there we're moving this object and the best way to to understand that and to be aware of it constantly while you're modeling is to whilst you're in this uh, selection mode switch on show cage and this yellow orange uh, cage will show up and that will give you an indicator of where the actual polygons are and the vertices are that you're moving because the mesh smooth is going to smooth it but it's not going to give you a true representation of the the vertices that you're actually moving it's the orange box that that is the actual mesh okay so we need to bring a little bit of roundness back to this uh, this character so we, let's go to the let's go to the right view V right and the best way to do that is to select this center with your marquee tool and if you rotate around you'll see that I've selected all of the vertices down the center and we'll go back to that right view and if we select those center vertices and drag them up you'll see we're starting to get our circle back and then select all of our vertices and drag down a little in fact we can go to a front view and line it up with our snail just in here and that's working so we'll go back to the right view do the same for the sides where we need to and we can do both sides in this instance by using the marquee tool then using control and the marquee tool on the other side and that gives us both of our left and right rows of, ver of vertices and we can use scale so we're going to scale that out a little bit and we'll just slide our vertice our marquee tool through these vertices and scale that in a little bit and just raise them up slightly just to just sort of maintain that circular now the bottom is fairly flat so we, we I think we're going to just leave the bottom where it is it does need to curl over a little bit but I do prefer it a little flat if anything we can move the bottom up a little bit down through the center vertices and then grab all of the vertices and just bring it back down to that baseline and that's going to work work nicely we'll just go to a front view and make sure that that's that's the right height uh, it could come down a little bit so we can slide it along and grab all of our vertices there and just just bring it down there we go now let's go to a top view and we can see that our our entire character is a little bit wide so let's select all of the vertices in it 
and use our scale and bring the scale back to the center. You'll see that we need to come out a little bit and that's it there. And that shape's looking pretty good. Okay, now while we're in front view, we're going to move a couple of these uh, these uh, vertical rows of vertices. We're going to grab this one here and just move it in a little bit just to line up with where this rounded sh uh, shell comes in. And we're going to grab this one and move it out a little bit. These ones are fine. We can grab them both if you like and, and just sort of center them up. And then we just need to share the share the distance out here a little bit. That's probably fine there for now. And that's going to be fine. Now, we'll get the tail out of the road. Let's grab all the vertices at the very end here. And we're going to be using soft selection in edit poly and if we click use soft selection you'll see that our selection has changed and there's a color gradient happening now and if we roll down our fall off a little bit the blue is not affected so if I was to move you'll see that the blue stays put but gradually it gets more and more affected to the red and that's how soft selection works so we want to move it until it's until the blue is on this tail where it meets the shell and what we're going to do is scale but just before we do let's get this play with the bubble setting a little bit and the pinch just a little bit just get something like that more of a pointed shape now we're going to drag down on the Y axis just to give it say our point something like that just come in that's going to work and we're going to go to the top view and we're going to drag in and that's going to give us our point in that direction as well something like that's fine now go back to your front view use your move tool and we're going to drag that tail down and there we have our tail. Now we'll go to the front here. I'm going to grab all these vertices here to switch off uh, soft selection. And we want to grab all of these front vertices here, these first three rows. We're going to drag up until we sort of line up with where the head is. And then we're going to come back to this row of vertices. And we're going to drag those up and roughly when it's in the center we're going to use the rotate and we're going to rotate it around and then we can play with it slightly just to line it up we can move it up a little that's fine we can probably grab this where it meets the shell and just drag it out a little and rotate it back a little something like that and that's fine now we can probably grab this third last row here and just give it a bit of rotation and we can also scale it and just move it roughly where this neck where the jaw sort of comes into the neck there that's probably it there we'll probably scale it out just a tad too It's going to be fine. Now we'll grab this row of vertices here. We're going to move them back. Move it down slightly. And that's probably fine. We'll grab the first ones and move those down as well. Okay, so we've got our basic shape there. 